Wired Magazine put out this story, right? They got a hold of uh, some of the materials that the Joint Forces Staff College course called Perspectives on Islam and the Islamic Radicalism. So there's the War College, yeah. and they have this uh, Joint Forces Staff College. They had a course. Their sweatshirts just say war on it. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were, they, they, there were some problems with how they were characterizing uh, the Islamic faith and people of the Islamic faith. What, 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 what were some of the problems, Jimmy? Here are some of the problems. Here, uh, there what were some of the problems, Jimmy? There was a PowerPoint, thank you. There was a PowerPoint presentation given by Lieutenant Colonel Matthew A. Dooley, who still has a job job over there, by the way. And in his PowerPoint, uh, it had such inflammatory material as such. It said, using the lessons of Hiroshima to wipe out whole cities at once, targeting the civilian population wherever necessary in a total war against Muslims. So that was part of it. Like, he's advocating that. Like, hey, we had to do it in Hiroshima. We might have to do it here. Here's another thing. He, uh, cl there was a part of his presentation claimed that there is no such thing as a moderate Islam. Yes, and it's therefore time for the United States to make our true intentions clear. This barbaric ideology will no longer be tolerated. Islam must change or we will facilitate its self-destruction. It's outrageous that this is happening. I mean, it's just... This is it's unbelievable. Yeah. Right? So yeah. this was really happening. And here's one more. I'll give you one more just to get your blood pumping. Uh, Asserting by conservative estimates, this is what this PowerPoint presentation said, asserting by conservative estimates, 10% of the world's Muslims, that's a staggering 140 million people, hate everything you stand for and will never coexist with you unless you submit to Islam. So this is the stuff they're actually teaching in this course. We're being taught by a Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Dooley, who still has a job at the Joint Forces Staff College in Norfolk, Virginia by the way, after this. But this wasn't like, he, I don't think he invented this. You know, like this was like part of the uh, curriculum that was given to him. So tell me about uh, why he would still have a job. In other words, you know, we have tenured professors here who say outrageous things in, in colleges all over the country. And they say, how is this guy still teaching? Because that's part of, you know, it's part of education is hearing crazy things and de deciphering why he would, crazy things. He still has a job because they're still doing the investigation right now. Okay. So that's what, so we'll see. But um, And he, do you think he should lose his job because of saying these things? I think anybody involved with that should uh, be not involved. Yes. Should Who's lose paying job. him? Are we paying We're him? Paying we're him. paying him. Of course him. we're paying Paying him. Uh, he taught army officers that international laws protecting civilians in wartime are no longer relevant. This is what he taught. And the historical precedents of Dresden, Tokyo, Hiroshima, Nag Hiroshima, Nagasaki could be applied to bring about Mecca and Medina's destruction. It's <laughs> incredible. So this is um, this is like the more mongering like I've never heard before. Yeah, and it's coming from uh, an educator in our armed forces, uh, educating our armed forces, and you know, sort of misleading. I mean, we get misleading uh, statements from way up higher than yeah. that, but this is actually creating... It's better. There's even more to so, the story. Give it to like me quickly, So yeah. this Dooley guy, this Lieutenant Colonel, he also invited a controversial guest lecturer. Oh, really? Did he? And who was it? Well, it's former FBI employee John Guandalo, who, what did he do? He alleged that the president has fallen under the influence of Islamic extremists and his reference materials for the Joint Forces Staff College portrayed Muslims as enemies of the West and sought to justify the Crusades as a response to years of Muslim incursion into Western lands. These aren't a bunch of guys out in the woods in Michigan who <laughs> right. listening to Ted Nugent. <laughs> Right? These are the guys. This is an FBI guy from the FBI. This is the lieutenant colonel from the... This is unbelievable that yeah. this is happening. And uh, you wonder why... And, and we're not winning the war for hearts and minds in Afghanistan? <laughs> we're really not winning the war for hearts and minds? And we won't win the war. That's not how we're going to win the war. And that's why we shouldn't be in the war. The best way to deter a nuclear attack on U.S. soil is to threaten to retaliate by bombing Islamic holy sites like Mecca and Medina. Those are the words of Republican presidential hopeful Tom Tancredo. The Colorado congressman says he thinks a terror attack here could be imminent. And he said the U.S. needs to quickly find a way to stop it. 
He said of a threat to attack these holy sites, quote, that's the only thing I can think of that might deter somebody from doing what they otherwise might do. There have to be negative consequences for the actions they take. That's the most negative I can think of, unquote. Tancredo insists the harsh approach is necessary in order to prevent a worldwide collapse. An Islamic advocacy group is calling his statements unworthy of anyone seeking public office in the United States. But Tancredo's campaign says he stands by what he said. In fact, it isn't the first time he said this stuff. A couple of years ago, Tancredo received international criticism when he told a radio host you could take out Islamic holy sites if terrorists ever launched a nuclear attack against the U.S. So here's the question. Republican presidential hopeful Tom Tancredo says the best way to deter a nuclear terror attack on U.S. soil is to threaten to retaliate by bombing Islamic holy sites. Got a better idea? Karen in Michigan writes, I'll be the brave soul and put this out there. Remember World War II in Japan? Answer, point, set, match, done, silence. Sylvia in Denver, Tom Tancredo's off the wall almost all the time. He's of the same mind as the terrorists themselves, bombing civilian religious sites. He's not playing with a full deck and he's an embarrassment to Colorado. Gary in Wisconsin writes, I don't have a better idea other than to say, yes, tough talk and action are needed to deter future attacks. The terrorist problem will not fade away, and terrorist groups have no diplomats and no desire to partake in diplomacy. The Pollyanna ideal of some Americans that war is never the answer only works on a bumper sticker. Jerry, who is a U.N. peacekeeper, uh, retired now, so when the uh, U.S. has bombed the holy sites, what other deterrent is there after that? The extremists would have nothing to lose and more to fuel their anger. It's the most short-sighted and stupid suggestion I've ever heard. Morley writes, the only thing I might do with Mr. Tancredo's idea is to refine it a little bit. Threaten to bomb Qum, and Iran will stop being the power behind the terrorists. Medina and Mecca are holy to all Muslims, peaceful and otherwise. Don't alienate the peaceful ones in order to punish the guilty. Steve writes, I'm embarrassed to admit this man's my representative. I think he needs to do some homework on the collective psyche of Islamic fundamentalists. The theme of honor killing and revenge is so strong among them. Violence doesn't stop violence. I think he's just trying to appeal to a macho base. And finally, Joe writes this, Tom Tancredo has picked up on an idea I had immediately after 9-11. I call it, grab them by their Mecca and Medina and their hearts and minds will follow. Maybe then the so-called Islamic moderates will get their wild dogs on a leash. Via Skype. Um, I twice I have received a question, both at the same church in Houston. And this individual asked me a question. I remember he asked me it privately, well, sort of private, after I gave a talk on Islam a couple years ago. And then he gave it more publicly, and I linked to my talks uh, there in uh, Houston, so you may hear my response to it. Um, there, are, there are only a few times that I have responded to a question as strongly as I did both times that I was asked this question. And sometimes I feel badly about that, but sometimes there's, there's a time to speak strongly. And what the gentleman asked me uh, was, in essence, um, and now I know where this was coming from, and that's what surprises me. Uh, I, I just discovered where this came from. Um, basically, what he asked was, I've read that the best way to deal with Islam would be to nuke the Kaaba, drop a nuclear bomb on, on Mecca and get rid of the Kaaba. That would end Islam. And I remember the first time he asked me this, we were just standing there after a conversation, you know, like I said, after a presentation I had made. And, and I, I was like, and I think my response was, that's the stupidest thing I have ever heard. Now, I normally do not respond to even relatively stupid questions um, by saying that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, but it was hard for me not to say it. Uh, because I, I, I was like, 
who are you reading that would ever make such an incredible, outlandish assertion? And then he, he asked it again this last time I was there, just a few weeks ago. And I, I again, very strongly said, it, you've, you've got to be kidding me. The, the, whoever you're reading, stop reading this person. Uh, because they, 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 they don't understand anything. Well, I was just reading an article. And I wish there was a reference to this. And so I am going to say, this is on the Internet. I'll be interested to see if it actually um, uh, pans out as being accurate. But it is attributed to Dr. Robert Morey. And here's what it says. First, as I wrote in my book, How to Win the War Against Radical Islam, the war against the Muslim jihadists will be long and costly and will not be won until we bomb the Kaaba in Mecca. Islam is based on a brick-and-mortar building that can be destroyed. They pray that building five times a day, make a pilgrimage to it, run around it, kiss a black rock on the wall, then run between two hills and finally throw rocks at a pillar. What if that building, the Kaaba, was destroyed? They could not pray to it or make a pilgrimage to it. The old pagan temple of the moon god, Al-Ilah, is the Achilles heel of Islam. Destroy it and you destroy Islam's soul. There is the quote. No reference is given. That bothers me that no reference is given. But since, obviously, this is floating around and people are reading it, um, may I comment briefly upon this assertion? First of all, uh, no one who actually understands the Islamic theology uh, believes that anyone's praying to the building. It's the, uh, the black stone is what the Qibla points toward, not the building. The building has been torn down and rebuilt many times, the last time within recent memory, just within the past 30 or 40 years. It's not the building. The building is not what is sacred. It is the black stone. And so while you might destroy the black stone, the point is the Kaaba itself is not the focus. And so there is a fundamental misunderstanding at that point. Uh, was there a, an idol to a moon god in the Kaaba? Well, there were about 360 idols. Some stories say that there were even images of Jesus and Mary in the Kaaba. One story is that when Muhammad had the idols removed from the Kaaba, uh, that he was asked about the Im images of Jesus and Mary, and they weren't destroyed. They weren't kept there, but they weren't destroyed. That would be consistent with Sir Mar uh, Mariam, anyways. But the point is, um, might there have been a moon god idol in the Kaaba? Well, I, I, I don't think there's any reason to think there wasn't. And there was probably a sun god and uh, stars and all sorts of other things. You've got 360 idols, you've got to come up with something for 360 idols. Um, is it true that the pilgrimages and the circumambulation, uh, the loft going around, the, uh, did they pre-exist Muhammad? They did. Did he make changes to those things? Yeah, like you have to wear clothes. <laughs> um, but did, were, they, were they pagan ceremonies, pagan things prior to Muhammad? They were. The answer provided by Islam that these actually went back to Abraham and, at least in the traditional sources, Ishmael, and that the Kaaba was built by Abraham and, in traditional sources, Ishmael as a place of worship. Uh, I don't think there's, there's a meaningful shred of historical evidence of that. And the idea that, well, you know, Muhammad was restoring something, I, I, please don't expect me to buy that. But that's the Islamic understanding. Now, is there some connection uh, between the moon god and Allah? Well, not in Islamic theology. Might there have been people at one point in time that identified a god similar to Allah with the moon? Well, I'm sure there was. I mean, anybody who... The whole reason I've never bought into the moon god stuff is because it's a two-edged sword, and I have preached for a long time that you need to be consistent in the arguments that you're using. 
And the name El can be found in all sorts of pagan religions, just as it's found in the Hebrew Old Testament. So does that mean something? El, Elohim, must be interpreted within the context in which it was used. And just because a pagan used El or Elyon or even Elohim in a pagan context really means nothing. Unless you're just trying to prove pure reliance and pure borrowing, which would be pretty difficult to do in regards to the Old Testament in light of the emphasis upon monotheism. And this is exactly what modern scholars are doing. This is one of the things I was arguing about when I did the long series in response to the LDS scholar just a few uh, months ago. Uh, actually, what, six, eight weeks, something like that, uh, on, on the blog. So you have to be careful. And the, the question is, are Muslims bowing down to a moon god? Well, no, they're not bowing down to a moon god. They don't believe that Allah is a moon god and all the rest of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so when it says, um, what if that building, the Kaaba, was destroyed? They could not pray to it. They're not praying to it. They're praying to the black, toward the black stone. Uh, or make a pilgrimage to it. The old pagan temple, the moon god, Alila, is the Achilles heel of Islam. Destroy it and you destroy Islam's soul. Well, if those are the words of Robert Morey, then shame on Robert Morey. That's, that, that does deserve one of the stupidest statements of all time uh, identifications. There's just no question about it. Um, you nuke the Kaaba, and you create 1.5 billion radical Muslims. They don't need that. It could be rebuilt someplace else. It would unify them like nothing else in the world would ever unify them. It is the dumbest, stupidest suggestion I've ever heard anyone ever make at any time in my life. And if Robert Morey made it, shame on him. How dare he? What, what foolishness. Uh, but I don't know that he did. I would like to get some evidence that someone, in fact, somebody, I'll bet you dollars donuts, somebody listening right now would be able to tell me. Uh, okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> but I still need a reference. I'm getting, I'm getting commentary from people who knew him that said he had said this many times. But I would like to see real uh, documentary evidence, honestly, uh, of something like that. Because I just, I, I just am left stuttering at, uh, at something like that. Uh, I, I truly am. Is Doc in channel? Yes, I am. I am in channel. Uh, Turretin, the the great Turretin fan, uh, has given me a link, and this is live. And uh, here is the uh, the statement, Doctor Robert Morey, PhD, Islamic Studies. This is Faith Defenders. That's his website. And there is the exact quote. There it is. This is uh, faithdefenders.com slash news slash Osama bin Laden dot html. Uh, by Dr. Robert Morey, Ph.D. Islamic Studies. Not sure where that came from, but anyways. Uh, first, I wrote my book. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the Old Pagan Temple, the Moon God, Alila. It's Achilles' heel of Islam. Destroy it and you destroy Islam. Islam so. Well, okay. Um, thank you very much, Turton fan. And uh, there we have uh, documentation.